eaten in the pit of my stomach, a day that I've dreaded since I was born, actually, since I was old enough to understand some things happened today. The Supreme Court of the United States of America determined that the Defense of Marriage Act is an unconstitutional law that to say that marriage only is between a man and a woman is against the Constitution of the United States. Well, I'm stunned, and yet I saw it coming. This court has been stacked for a long time against God, against the Bible, and for humanism. Well, it all came boiling out today with this vote, five to four. So one person decided that marriage was no longer between a man and a woman. One person carried the balance of power in this vote and put himself in a position to say the Bible is not true. You just cannot trust the Bible when it says that God made male and female and said it was good. Genesis 2, 24 says it this way, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now, that's when God ordained marriage. That's what he intended for marriage to be. So where does this leave us? Those of us who are Bible-believing Christians, uh, of course, the Supreme Court said the Bible is not true. The Bible is a myth. The Bible is not to be trusted. Our voice is more important than Scripture. The opinion of President Barack Obama is more important than the Bible. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about this today. I don't want to talk about it with malice nor hatred, but I also don't want to talk about it with fear either. I want us to talk about this openly. Where are we? And is there any hope left? I remember when I saw this headline this morning, my first thought was, only God can help us now. But I'm sure he was the only one that could help us before today's Supreme Court ruling. But we find ourselves in a place where powers have gained control of the government of the United States of America that are anti-Bible, anti-God. You've got to be anti-God if you're anti-the Bible. Now, I don't care how many people scream to the top of their voice, how many people protest that they believe in God and that they're Christian. You cannot be Christian and embrace same-sex marriage. You cannot be Christian while you trash the Bible. Uh, it's an impossibility. Uh, you either are on one side or you're on the other. You either think the Bible is a myth, that it's uncivil. That's what they rule today, that in the name of civil rights, we have to have same-sex marriage. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me talk some sense to you today. They're saying, let me read the first paragraph of this article. A divided U.S. Supreme Court overturned the federal law that defines marriage as a heterosexual union, saying it violates the rights of married gay couples. There's no such thing as married gay couples. How can it violate, violate the rights of married gay couples when marriage is between a man and a woman. There's no such thing as a married gay couple. There may be a gay couple, but there's no such thing as a married gay couple. Let me say it this way. A man can no more marry a man than a man can marry a dog or a man can marry a cat or a man can marry a cow. It's just wrong. By the way, where do we get our sense of right and wrong? How do you tell what's right or what's wrong? Once you decide that the Bible is no longer the standard of right and wrong, then you just make the rules up as you go. There's no limit to how far you can go. Then we just depend on whoever's in power at the time to tell us, what is right and what is wrong. And that's what's happening right now. We have kicked to the curb the Bible. We've kicked to the curb the Constitution. I awoke to the news this morning that President Obama is going to use the 
Environmental Protection Agency to set carbon standards. That should only be done by a law enacted by the Congress, and yet he's going right around the Congress, and we're moving into a dictatorship. We're talking about a total surveillance society. Now, I'm only bringing these things up because the Bible prophesies a one-world government coming and a government whereby uh, there will be a man ruling. He will be a strong ruler, and his word will become law. He will tell us when we can buy or sell. He can tell us who we should worship. I mean, you say it can't get there. Well, we didn't think that we would ever see the day when in the United States of America, nine people, actually five people, could overturn the will of the U.S. Congress. Now, they'd like to say that all the American people are for same-sex marriage today, but that's not true. Only 12 states have now embraced it. And of those 12 states, only four or five was done by referendum. The rest were done by liberal uh, courts or liberal uh, congresses that enacted this. So even though they like to say everybody's for it, the fact is most states that have had the chance to vote have voted against it. Okay, America, we are either going to value the Bible as God's word, or we are going to go in total anarchy. I mean, who says that murder is wrong? We've already broken that stigma down with the proliferation of abortions. I mean, think about this. If a baby's inside the womb, you can kill it. If it's outside the womb, it's murder. How do you do that? Something has broken in the American soul. Now, I'm not going to lay this at the feet of the politicians today. I've got to bring this to all of our feet. Where are we? Let me just ask you a few probing questions. And I don't do this to make you feel bad. I do this to awaken all of us. One, are you teaching your children the values of the Bible? Do you even know what the values of the Bible are. Perhaps your parents didn't teach you. And if your parents didn't teach you, then you're going to need to open the Bible for yourself and begin to read. Because David said, Thy word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my pathway. So, first of all, acquire biblical values for yourself. Associate yourself with a church where they preach the Bible, and they don't preach just part of the Bible. They preach the entire Bible. They preach it with fervor, and they preach it with love, but they preach it. They don't compromise it. If the Bible says that neither fornicator nor adulterer nor effeminate nor homosexual shall inherit the kingdom of God, don't skip that scripture. I am so stunned that so many people are willing to skip Scripture because they disagree with it. I mean, if God is God and you disagree with him, who do you change? Do you change God or do you change yourself? If we are to bow before God, that means we submit ourselves unto him. And when God's word contradicts us or our lifestyle, the time has not come to change God's word, which is what is happening today. These five people on the U.S. Supreme Court, they know what the Bible says about marriage. They know. I mean, I've read it to you. Genesis 2.24, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. So how do we get to such a perverted stance where the most prestigious court in our nation could rule that the Bible is not true? They're right. The Bible is wrong. They threw the Bible under the bus today. They looked God in the face 
and said, we're smarter than you. Now, I'm trying to say this strong enough so that the impact of it will hit us without in any way sowing hate toward an individual. I'm just simply saying that we're so far from God right now. Remember when Israel got so far from God, they even reached the point where they were, uh, they were sacrificing their children to false gods. They were sending their children through the fire. You say, oh, we would never do that. No, we'll just abort them. Now then, the next step, of course, is euthanasia. We've got a real problem in this country, and that is we're going to have more people on retirement and draw, drawing government benefits than the people who are working can pay. I read some statistics on it this morning. Already it's being promoted in Europe. It's already being done. When a person gets a certain age, they can choose to end their life when they feel like they're no longer productive. I mean, Adolf Hitler did it. Uh, anybody that was not productive in their life, get them out of the way. Now, could we come to that place in America? Ladies and gentlemen, we're almost there. Why not? When we no longer fear God nor reverence his word, we can do whatever we think we should do. And that's where we've come to as a nation. So what's the answer? It starts with you and me. I'm not blaming this on President Obama. I'm not blaming this on the Supreme Court, although they certainly will share their burden. They will meet God before too long, and answer to him. President Obama will stand before God and explain why he was such a strong advocate of abortion. He will stand before God, and he will answer why he became the champion of same-sex marriage, of sodomy, of homosexuality. He will do that. However, I've got to stand before God for me. And when I look in the mirror, okay, God, have I lost my salt? Am I no longer influential in the world in which I live? Have I become so compromised and so lukewarm spiritually that I no longer affect the world about me? Those are the questions we have to ask right now. Bottom line, we need a revival in the United States of America. A spiritual answer is the only answer. 